the value of our own thinking when we know that the mind is so vulnerable to being manipulated by others when we know that the mind is full of influences coming from others then what is the value of our thoughts sort of if you really are feeling this then the first thing is to stop saying our thinking and my own thoughts right because our opinions our thoughts are any way not are our likes and dislikes they are any way being dictated by the influences around us hmm born in india you like cricket so much born in argentina or brazil you won't have heard of cricket and today you say oh my god i am all the time thinking of cricket maria sharapova recently said tendulkar who born in her country you would have said the same thing tendulkar who but we take our opinions very seriously without realizing that they are of no value at all being an indian you are bound to have a certain opinion about pakistan and being a pakistani you are bound to have a certain opinion about afghanistan sitting in this college you will have one particular opinion about other colleges other colleges will have an opinion about this colleges it all depends upon where you are sitting and that is so very random so random what is the value of these opinions only two places from only two places do all our opinions come from one either the body b the society there is no third place how do opinions come from body the tongue tells you something is tasty so now you have an opinion about it being born a man you will have a particular opinion about women women do not have the same opinion about women that men have about women right or wrong so is it your opinion or your body's opinion and what is the body nothing but a random event of x chromosome versus the y chromosome and you call it my opinion and you are so serious about it somebody contradicts your opinion you are ready to fight what are you fighting for if you study in a particular kind of university your mindset is bound to become <coughs> communist marx would become your hero you would be like looking at lenin and che guevara and you go and you study in a in an australian or an american university and you have nothing to do with these people now you are talking only of the great economists <coughs> our opinions are not at all our opinions think of how one acquires opinions and when i say opinions that includes the entire family of opinions thoughts attitudes likes dislikes everything 
the entire content of the mind is it really really mind or has it come from random influences born as a hindu you will have a certain attitude about muslims born as a muslim you will have a certain attitude about jews of course little bit of variation might be there but broadly it is defined broadly it is well defined so there is the israel gaza conflict don't you see most of pakistan has sided itself with with hamas and if you go to us or canada or any european country they are pretty sympathetic with israel now how is it possible that such low sided statistical distribution is there the pakistani will say hamas is doing just the right thing now is the individual saying this or is the pakistani saying this is the individual saying this or is the pakistani saying this the american is saying israeli israel is doing just the right thing now is the individual saying this or the american saying this so are their opinions their opinions or are the opinions of the influences around them but what will they say my opinion and they are prepared to die for it the pakistani and the american if they meet they'll kill each other my opinion versus your opinion is it really your opinion really your opinion i have narrated this incident earlier but this is such a rich one that i need to do it again when i reached iit after taking admission so based on my rank and my entry number they allotted me a hostel hmm it was a purely random event your rank and you have a entry number in the institute first of all based on my rank i could have gone to any other iit as well it's a random event that i am taking iit delhi then in the iit i have a particular entry number my entry number could have been different i didn't choose my entry number there is nothing sacrosanct about that entry number so based on that entry number i have been allotted a hostel so i reached the hostel and after the initial writing and everything the seniors call us and they say now we are going to the terrace of the hostel he said wonderful for what they said there we will abuse all over us all the other hostels from there we can see everybody else so together we will abuse them with the choicest kind of expletives so we were trained for half an hour three dimensional four dimensional fifth degree abuses is that today we have to rock the campus today we have to show the entire campus that our hostel is this and the other hostels we know all about your mothers and sisters so i was also enthused but i said but tell me something why do i have to abuse them is it because you belong here i said i belong here only because of an entry number with a little bit change here and there with some other random event happening i could as well have been in that hostel it's such a random event and you're asking me to abuse them they said ye hostel drohi hai
You are not loyal to your hostel? He said, what loyalty? I could have been somewhere else as well. And tomorrow this hostel can be split into two hostels. Just as countries are split into this country and that country. What do you mean by loyalty? To what? To a coincidence? So ultimately, instead of abusing other hostels, they all ended up abusing me. <laughs> that this is a wrong kind of man that has come to the hostel. He is not loyal. Because you are here, so you must display loyalty. Then there were loyalties of other kinds also. You belong to this department. Now the fact is, had I got a better rank, I would have belonged to some other department. <coughs> it was not my grand dream to belong to that department. Not that that department was horrible, it was alright. But the fact of the matter is, with another rank, I would have been in another department. So they are saying now belong to this department. So all other departments are now your enemies. Don't talk to them. Don't disclose our secrets. <coughs> we will have an interdepartmental meet and we will beat everybody else. And it's better if your friends are from within the department. And it was great, you know. Gang wars. So mechanical versus civil. <laughs> Biotechnology versus electrical. For what? And every biotechnology student feels electrical is worst. Same opinion. And all electrical students can swear that biotech is hell. Same opinion. What is the worth of these opinions? What is the worth of these opinions? Does that mean that there is nothing worthy possible in the mind? No, this does not mean that. The mind is the most wonderful thing. If corrupted, it is worse than health. But if clean, shining, then it is the most valuable, more valuable than anything else that can be thought of or not thought of. When the mind is corrupted, it is conditioning. When the mind is clean, then it is pure intelligence. When the mind is corrupted, conditioned, then you will be full of opinions. But when the mind is clean, then you will not have opinions at all. Then you will just have the capacity to understand in the moment. See, look, there are two ways you can come to this session. One, I already know what this seminar, what this course is all about. Hmm? So then you have an opinion, a kind of attitude about the course and about me. <coughs> That's the fool. That's the conditioned mind. And there is another kind of mind possible which says, no, I do not know anything. I do not know anything, but surely I have the capability to understand. So I'll go and I'll sit and I'll listen. And as I listen, I'll understand. Why do I need to have ready-made opinions coming from the past? Intelligence is enough. Understanding is enough. 
and that is valuable. Now it depends on you. What do you want to use your mind as? You can use your mind as a storehouse of opinions or you can use your mind as the seat of intelligence. What do you want to use your mind as? The question was, is there any value in all this? There is great value, but not in opinions. In intelligence. And that intelligence is not something of the past. That intelligence does not come from influences. That intelligence is the real you. That intelligence is not about thinking hard. That intelligence is about being so still that you just understand. Are you getting this? Intelligence is not about having a lot of knowledge. In fact, knowledge will only give you more and more likes, dislikes and opinions. Intelligence is about being fully alive, being fully present. It depends upon you. What do you want to use the mind as? What is the mind for you? Just a dead inventory containing the memories of the past and hopes of the future? A storehouse? Or as a great instrument of understanding. <coughs> and understanding happens only in an atmosphere where attitudes are not there. Attitude and opinion means I already know. When you already know, then how can you know? When you already know, then how can you know? So the one who already knows ends up knowing nothing. 